Hey everyone, short video here, I promise. This is going to be on homologous, non-homologous, and joining. And this is another DNA repair process that repairs double strand breaks. So why do cells need another process? Well, you know, and there might be more than just two. I'm blanking on the names of others. I think there's microhomology mediated non-homologous and joining that might be different from what we're talking about now. But in any case, this is a, another process that can repair double strand breaks in addition to homologous recombination repair, HRR, which we talked about in the last video. So why would, okay, so, so when would this be used? Non-homologous end joining, and the abbreviation is N-H-E-J. And I really wanna talk about this here because when we talk about CRISPR-Cas9-based genome engineering in a future lecture, this is going to be important. So, so, well, why does the cell need this, right? Well, one case might be, so in the G1 phase of the cell cycle when there's no sister chromatid, right? So chromatids are, you know, not paired with the sister. The DNA hasn't been replicated yet. So let's say there's no sister chromatid and for one reason or the other, the cell can't find the uh, homologous chromosome to use as a template. And some organisms, some eukaryotes are haploid, right? So there's no, they have haploid phases and there's no homologous chromosome there to use as a template. So non-homologous end joining can be used when there's no donor template. And the problem with non-homologous end joining is it is low fidelity or no fidelity. I don't even know if we could say low fidelity, we could say no fidelity. So essentially, it's just a process that, that finds the two ends and sticks them back together. So how does the mechanism work? We can come up with four basic steps. End binding, end bridging, end processing, and end ligation. So so let me zoom in on this little break right here with the diagram right here. So here's the broken spot right there. Here, I'll put a little overhang in here. So I don't know what caused the break. Maybe reactive oxygen species attacking both sides, maybe. Maybe gamma ray, x-rays or something caused a double strand break. And these little little dots right here, and I mean we're going this way, and these guys over here are coming this way right here. But here's the double, maybe it was a really bad break, like a little, a lot of damage there. We lost some nucleotides, even we lost some nucleotides from from both sides. And there's no homologous template around to use as a donor, so we're going to use non-homologous end joining, N H E J, to fix this. First step, end binding. So N H E J proteins come in and bind the ends, and I these are kind of close together. I wish I diagrammed them a little further apart. So these are, and we're just going to generically refer to all of these proteins as NHEJ proteins. Again, we will talk about this in detail in BSC 350 if you are interested. I think these are, are KU proteins, KU70, KU80. We don't need those names for this course. Okay, so they're binding to the ends here. And that's step one. Step two, end bridging. So other NHEJ proteins come in and they are gonna bind to these proteins and to each other. 
and that's going to bridge this gap here and keep the ends from, from moving away from each other in the cell. And I saw one somewhere once, some reference uh, that that was investigating this this whole non-homologous end joining. And I think, if I remember correctly, there are so many of these end binding proteins around. So they're available to grab these ends and, and this bridging step is able to happen relatively quickly so we can keep these ends from, from drifting away from each other. In the previous video, we said 10 to 100 double strand breaks per day in human cells, if this is accurate, well, that's a lot of double strand breaks. And some of them might have to be repaired by non-homologous end joining. So these proteins are, are stand ready in the nucleus to grab the DNA, lock onto it to keep the, the molecules, the double stranded DNA ends from drifting apart. Okay, the third step, end processing. So before these can be stuck together, the ends need to be polished. What do I mean by polish? So see, I have these little overhangs here. Well, those need to be trimmed away. And if they aren't trimmed away, then the other thing that can happen is we can add a base up here. A DNA polymerase can come in and add a, add a base. So we're going to make these blunt ended. So no overhangs. So nice blunt ends. And that's going to be called end processing. Now that process no pun intended, right? That process can lead to loss of genetic information. So there's a recent paper in, I believe it was the journal Nature, where it was a pretty big paper and it was involved in, I think, I think it was on CRISPR-Cas9-based genome engineering. And it looked like there was a mistake made because it looked like things were being repaired by non-homologous end joining and lots of DNA was being trimmed away during the end processing step. So we're losing lots of genetic information and, and it led to uh, a false interpretation of the data. So it was really surprising. Um, no one can blame the scientists for making that mistake. But long story short, you can lose a lot of information during this end processing step where DNA is being trimmed away and or, or filled in. Um, like I said, long story short, we can lose information here. And uh, also over here, I drew these little free nucleotides that are just not associated anymore. So we're losing those for sure. So once these are made blunt ended and I can put the, the binding proteins in here and the bridging proteins and I'm not gonna I didn't diagram the, the other proteins that come in and process the ends. It, it could be joined together. It could be ligated. It's stuck back together. So let's say this is where the break was. Break, DSB, double strand break. Not double strand break, break, double strand break. is repaired or has been repaired. Okay, but we potentially lost some nucleotides in here. So non-homologous end joining is low fidelity or we can call it no fidelity. It's just finding the broken ends, polishing them and sticking them back together, possibly with a loss of genetic information. So this process can lead to mutation, but it, it, it's uh, like we've said in the past, it's important to repair the double strand breaks, otherwise exonucleases can chew them away and, and we can lead to, to loss of a big chunk of the chromosome and uh, activation of the program cell death pathway. So that's a little too much information. But uh, just know it's important to fix the double strand breaks and when HRR cannot be used, NHEJ can be used. HRR is the high fidelity process and HEJ is the low fidelity process. Okay, well, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, that's it for DNA repair and mutations. We are moving on to gene regulation in prokaryotes.